Well, right, so we have two questions to answer in this video. First of all, how did I beat Jano Opmia by 37 seconds in a 45 minute IMSA race? And second of all, how do I make this video without sounding braggy? <laughs> I mean, I don't think we'll find the answer to that one. So to give a bit of context here, we're on a 45 minute race around Road Atlanta. It's multi-class, which means that there are LMDHs, there are LMP2s, and there are GT3s. Now we're racing in the fastest class, which is the BMW LMDH car. Really just a great combination, if you ask me. It's a great flow. It's a really satisfying combination to drive. Now let's look at the quality results. So as you can see here, we get pulled by quite a margin, especially over Yano, it's about 1.6 seconds back. As for the race start, we get a pretty nice race start. You can see the guys right behind us crash. Yano Obmi is down in like sixth place at this point, and he's making up a couple of positions. You can actually see that the two guys that crash, one of them just ends up spinning onto the grass in the pit entry. Uh, <laughs> pretty terrible, to be honest. You can see, coming into turn one, Yano is making up moves. He's going around the outside of turn one, which is, in my opinion, an absolutely crazy move. That's very scary because of netcode and the guy might run right. You can see he almost runs onto the grass as well, but he makes it through, which is positive. So as we come to the end of lap one, Yano's actually gone up to P3 uh, and we in the lead are far gone. So basically from now on, I want to be analyzing a bit, you know, where Yano could have gained time and where I gain a lot of time on him and kind of trying to just learn you something from this video. So coming to the first bit of traffic, I actually meet them in a really, really bad place. I meet them in the S's in turn one, basically the worst place on this track you can meet the traffic so I have to kind of navigate around it so basically we're gonna be looking at a bit of traffic management if you want the full guide on that I have a video up here that I put out recently uh, basically you can see here I leave a bit of a space to this guy in front in the S's uh, and that means that I can get way early on throttle and basically minimize the amount of time I've lost because I won't lose that much time down the next straight now that's just a little tiny tip that you can use which will gain you time eventually now let's have a look at Giano here on the sixth lap of the race basically what you see here is Giano trying to go for a move that doesn't really exist maybe reason being that through this corner there is only really one line and that's both for GTs and for LMDHs and LMP2s. There is only one line through this corner and that's why if you're not already past them going into the braking zone I would just recommend staying behind in this corner. But you can see Yano he goes for a very very late move here which actually ends up compromising the other guy's line massively and it also ends up losing Yano a bit of time because uh, in that corner the GT3s aren't actually that much slower than the LMPs. So of course when you are an LMP car you want to kind of avoid compromising the GT cars line too much because they also have a space uh, on the track but you know that happens. So of course there are more moments like this but we'll have a look at that later. Now let's have a look at both me and Yano fastest lap my fastest lap of the race is a 1065 and Yano's fastest lap is a 1075 so you can see already in turn one I use a bit more track on the entry of the corner which will allow me to carry a bit more speed than Yano now heading up the hill we get a bit early on throttle as well and coming into turn three I believe this is a place where we gain quite a bit of time on him if you look at the apex especially we are about half a car width further in on the apex we don't get an off track for this but we use more track and eventually we're able to carry quite a bit more speed through that corner. Now I think one reason for that is it's a really hard corner to get right because it's very blind both on the braking zone and when you're turning in for the apex. So what I actually do is I have a braking point which is about what two car lengths before the curb starts and then my turning point is kind of when the curb ends. Now this will allow me to get a lot more consistent uh, when I have these turning points and I'll be able to basically do that line every single lap. Moving down through the S's there's nothing like extremely special it's just all flat out and coming to turn five he actually takes it pretty decently well which is typically one of the corners I feel like a lot of time is lost but he actually takes that pretty well turn six as well I can't see there being too much time loss but as we come into turn seven here's a huge difference I actually break a bit earlier into this corner uh, and that's because I focus more on the apex uh, and focus more on getting that you know really really good exit onto the long back straight so you can see on the apex there's a huge difference on where my car is placed and where Yano's car is placed now now that also makes it so I'm probably able to get way only on throttle and there's probably a couple of tenths just down that straight because I do get a better exit. And coming into the chicane there's not a lot other than the fact I use a bit more track on entry, a bit more track on the first curb and then a bit more track on the exit curb which in general is just going to add up it's maybe what half a tenth to a tenth using that bit of extra track because I'm able to carry a bit more speed but that half a tenth to a tenth is going to add up over a 40 lap race quite easily. So now that we've compared the laps we can go back to the race and we can see we've kind of made our way through the first bit of traffic and uh, we're just pulling out a larger and larger gap at this point. Now one thing about Road Atlanta it is a crazy track 
for traffic. There's just a lot of cars on a very, very small track, and that's why traffic management is really important here. As you can see the shot, there are so many cars heading through the same corner at the same time. But I think that's part of the charm. I love this track. I love the traffic management. It's so chaotic. I, I just like it. Now, we've talked a bit about the traffic management, a bit about the lap times, but there's another little secret thing that I actually use to gain a bit more time. So basically, throughout the whole first stint, when I run into traffic, or even when I'm on my own, I'm fuel saving just a tiny bit like as an example here I'm on my own I lift off about 50 meters before the actual braking zone now this is not gonna lose you too much time because you can break a little later this is something you need to practice but you can break later uh, and eventually what that does is it gives us a shorter pit stop time now this is a little thing I use throughout the whole race uh, and we'll look at that whenever we get to the pit stop cycle but before we have a look at the pit stop cycle let's look a bit closer into the traffic management as you can see here in the chicane once again I'm optimizing the exit I can get so I'm going very, very tight over to the left-hand side of the track in the first part so I can switch back and get that good exit and lose as little time as possible. Another incident is here coming out of turn five. You can see we have an LMP2 car in front of us. Basically what I decide to do is I decide to follow that one through because I judge that I can get through the LMP2 line without affecting the GT's line too much. Now you need to be careful with this because there are some circumstances where you're going to affect the GT's car's line more. And this is just about judgment really. Um, the best way to develop judgment for when to lap when to overtake it's just by experience and you know we all we all start somewhere so you're not going to be too great in the start but with experience you'll get more of that feeling more of that experience and you'll eventually get better lapping cars i mean in all honesty from my perspective this race wasn't that interesting it was basically just being at the front trying to be consistent trying to get some good lap times in and then just surviving really so not the most interesting race from my perspective, but I think it's good that we can compare to someone like Yano, who's used to racing these more sprint races without multi-class, uh, how he does in a multi-class race with this sort of stuff. I do think it's actually quite an interesting comparison. Now, remember that fuel saving we were talking about earlier on in the race? So basically, we've been saving tiny bits of fuel throughout the whole race, which means that our total stop time will end up being a little bit shorter than Yano Opmis. But this is not the only trick that I'm using in the pit lane. First of all, I believe our pit entry was quite a bit better gaining around one couple tenth to half a second now the other secret strategy i use for this so basically while you're in the pit lane you can actually legally go 1.4 kilometers an hour faster than the pit limit this will gain you anywhere from half a second to a second in the pit lane there's a full guide up here if you want to watch that and combine that with our stop time i would say that our overall pit gain is about three seconds on just saving fuel and doing a fast pit entry and getting quickly through the pit lane we come out of the pit lane and the first lap out of the pit lane we run into these two GT cars going side by side. Now, you could be brave, or as I would call it, just absolutely stupid and try and go for a move while they're side by side, uh, but there's not really a lot to do here other than stay behind and wait for them to go one by one, which you can see we do, and then we just slip through into the middle of them and have to wait through the rest of the S's. Now, from this point on, not really a lot happens, and I finished my T. If you made it this far in this video, comment down below, I finished my T, and I'll give you a virtual cookie. Bye.